Hello, my name is Kate Cabrini and welcome to a new segment of Career Corner. I'm here with my high school teacher, Ms. Clara Davis. Hello, everybody. And we're going to talk about how she got the Dodia teacher position. <laughs> All right, so tell me about yourself. Uh, my name is Clara Davis. I've been in Dodia for about two years. I'm the oldest of 15 children, and teaching is my passion. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about your position in Dodia. Uh, here I teach uh, AP English, I also teach regular English, as well as uh, I have a, there's a, a pep squad that I coach, I'm the class advisor, which keeps me very busy, and I'm also, I also serve as an intern, uh, an administrative intern, because hopefully later on I'll be going into admin, so I'll have my own school, but that's what I do. Well, with all that experience behind you, how long have you been a teacher? I have been a teacher for approximately 26 years. Yes, yeah, so I figure I got about 10 more, and then um, I can sit down some more. Okay. And um, how did you find out about the DoDia position as a teacher? Well, I, I really didn't know too much about it at all, but I happened to be on vacation uh, in Florida one year, uh, several years ago, and this lady, I was walking on the beach, because I like to collect seashells, I was walking on the beach, and this lady comes up to me and says, ma'am, you look like you would be a great Dodia teacher, you know, and I'm like, well, what's Dodia? And she explained to me what it was all about, you may live overseas, so on and so forth, so, you know, I like to travel. So it kind of got me excited a little bit, piqued my interest. She gave me the website, and I went, to checked out the site, and looked at the application process and almost changed my mind. <laughs> uh, but then I'm like, you know what, let me just check it out. Let me try it. So I, I began the process. Uh, it took me a little while, but I was finally able to get through the entire process, and I submitted it So and just waited to hear from them. Um, how long did the application process take? It took about, well, it took me forever to get it done, but I finally finished, and once I submitted it, I didn't think about it anymore. Actually, I forgot about the, the entire thing, because they, they didn't call me, they didn't contact me, so I'm thinking, well, I guess it wasn't meant to happen. Uh, two years later, uh, one summer, everything happens to me in the summertime, one summer, uh, my mailbox started blowing up. They were, I was getting job offers. I got an offer to go to Kentucky, it was at Fort Campbell's in Kentucky, and then I got an offer for this school, and like, hey, okay. How about the interview process? How did they select you? Well, they, they told me they looked over all my requirements and they put me into a pool with other um, eligible candidates and then the, the principals actually at each school, they got to take a look at all the candidates and then they selected the ones that they thought would be a better fit for the school and that is the person that was granted the interview. So uh, Ms. Kennedy ended up calling me a few days later because she wanted me here at her school. And that's how I had the interview. I talked to her over the phone. That's very impressive. Um, with that rigorous process, how, um, how did you decide? What made you decide to be a teacher? Well, you know, being a part of a large family, I mean, we used to play school all the time. I was always the teacher, you know. So, but it was a, it was a natural flow uh, for me, being that my brothers and sisters looked to me for guidance all the time, and I was always showing somebody how to do something, teaching them how to do something. So it became very, very natural to me. Um, when I went to college, that never left, you know. People were always asking me for help, and I was pretty good uh, in school, in my classes, so I began tutoring people, and then it just, you know, it just felt right. It felt right, but I still didn't make my mind up until my junior year, they kind of forced you to choose a major, Yeah. you know. Well, <laughs> speaking and, of college, yes. um, what were some majors or some degrees that you needed in order for you to obtain this position? Uh, well, they, DoDia prefers that you have at least two degrees, a bachelor's and a master's. And uh, they even hired they hire PhDs as well. So, but yes, you have to have at least two degrees. So, uh, because they want you to have as many certifications as you can, so that you can have options once you enter into the system. Okay. Well, with that in mind, um, what are the perks of being a teacher? The perks of being a teacher, well, getting a chance to work with great kids, I mean, really, it sounds like a cliche, but it, it's really good. I love the classroom, love it, absolutely love it. Um, I also enjoy the breaks, of course, spring break, Christmas break, you know, all the other breaks. The breaks that, you know, uh, most of the times I work anyway, we don't really take break breaks, not as much as people think we do, 
but I enjoy being able to, you know, spend time with my family and enjoy the same holidays that the students do. So I, I love that. And the respect that you get um, being a teacher, um, it's kind of dwindled in the, in the past few years. People don't respect teachers as much as they used to, but they're still, at, but in Korea, oh my goodness, I'm in heaven because they respect teachers highly here and it's nice to be appreciated. So I like that. Um. Um, what is your pet peeve as a teacher? Uh, major pet peeve as a teacher is, is lateness. Uh, tardiness, I, it's just, it just sets my teeth on edge. And you know, I, I really don't like it when people waste my time. So I try not to waste my students' time. I try not to waste my colleagues' time. Um, if we're gonna do something, we're gonna do it, we're gonna get it done, that type of thing. Okay, well speaking of students' time, how do you start a class? Um, I'm an old school church girl, so uh, I pulled something from the uh, African American church uh, that I grew up in, and the preacher always starts off the service with "God is good," and the congregation says all the, all the time. time. You know, so I start my class with "English is good all the time." There you go. And I've been doing it for years. Well, um, just to wrap it up a little bit, what are your future plans? Well, my future plans are to become an administrator. I do have the license. I got the license to be an administrator back in 2008. So now I'm just waiting for someone to give me a chance to run their school. You know, hopefully I want to be able to run my own school. Um, right now, the idea is allowing me to get practical experience by allowing me to fill in for the administrators when they're away. And um, so that's what I want to do before I start thinking about retirement. Uh, is see if I can make a difference in students' lives uh, from the administrative level. I want to try that. I know that I can do it. I'm just waiting for somebody to give me the chance to do that. Okay. And um, last question. If you were to write a book, what would you call it? I would call my book, I get this, A Pound of Bologna and a Loaf of Bread. A you know Pound why? of Bologna and a Loaf of Bread. Yeah, because when I was coming up, there were so many of us my mom would send us to the store, corner store, go get a pound of bologna and a loaf of bread, and that's how we ate. You know, that, grits, and cornflakes. So, yeah, but whenever I see a pound of bologna and a loaf of bread, it takes me back to my childhood immediately. So I figured, I'm gonna call it, that's my book title. Right well, there, there you go. Go yes. through the struggles, still, you come out as the winner. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching. <laughs>